It's frustrating because being pregnant this entire time, they've told me that I really don't matter. How do you tell um, someone that what they're going through isn't real? It's been hard because I hate how people have treated me. I just want to get better. I want them to figure this out. So hopefully this is it and uh, I can get through this. In the U.S., Black women older than 30 are four times more likely to die due to pregnancy when compared to white women. But organizations like the Black Women's Health Imperative work tirelessly to change these outcomes by doing one thing, listening to Black women. In this film, you would see two examples. One where there was the kind of birth outcome that we all want. We want a healthy mom, we want a healthy baby. But in the other case, we see an outcome that happens far too often that we don't want. There's no reason for Dawn to have had the experience that she had. Much of what we see in adverse birth outcomes and maternal health outcomes is completely unnecessary. Thirty-eight years ago, Billy Avery brought 2,000 of her closest friends together to Spelman's campus to talk about how black women should take care of each other. But more importantly, how we should take care of ourselves. That three-day event led Billy to found what is now known as the Black Women's Health Imperative. The Black Women's Health Imperative is focused on the physical, emotional, and financial wellness of the nation's 20 million black women and girls. Racism, we know, stems from 400 years of oppression of black people in this country. That's very clear. Implicit bias is actually a little less clear. Implicit bias is an unconscious association, belief, or attitude toward any social group. For some people, they call it unconscious bias. And this is the inadvertent mistreatment, maltreatment, lack of treatment that people of color experience throughout our healthcare systems. There are hundreds of near misses, hundreds of stories like Dawn's that simply should not happen. Throughout the month of February, I was in the hospital at least 12 different times. Every instance, there was a doctor who looked at me and asked me, is there something mentally going on with you? Do you feel like it's just all in your mind? What am I supposed to say to someone, you know, when I don't even know what's really happening? Bedside manner and bias do go hand in hand, particularly as it pertains to um, disenfranchised populations. I have had multiple conversations with patients about being ignored them not feeling comfortable enough to ask questions because they felt rushed or they felt like their doctor wasn't listening with the ears to help. I get hospitalized in March to monitor the seizures. My OBGYN came in and the comment that came out of her mouth was, you know, ultimately we really feel like this is something mental going on and you need to deal with stress better. It was very hurtful, and I took to my social media pages to eventually share my story. Let me make this clear to you. This is what you gotta do. If I told you one time, if I told you two times, let's make it three times to make sure it's right. Grace was born prematurely. She was in the NICU for about a month. They kept telling me that the baby was fine as I'm having these seizures. Now she's not. The physicians and specialists let me know that developmental-wise that she would probably be a little bit slow. We had a lot of issues, but 
Literally by the grace of God, we both survived and her name is just, it tells it all, the whole story. Amazing grace. We know too often pregnancy does not end well for women or their children. In some cases it does. I am Fola Shadi Butler and I had a totally different experience. There is hope when it comes to getting phenomenal medical care. Having that village both in my family and friend circle, but also in the medical circle was very important. When we found out that I was pregnant and that my due date was October 17th, my mantra became make it to October because I thought there was something special about all of my kids being born in the month of October. And so when I went in for my 37 week appointment, um, I went in with swollen feet. My blood pressure was higher than normal for me. I was concerned that she was going to develop preeclampsia because she had a twin pregnancy. She's African-American. This was not her first pregnancy and she's advanced maternal age. She sat me down she said, listen. We need you to get your mind right and I am gonna deliver you tomorrow. And she said, no. <laughs> We're only a couple of days away from October. She explained to me all these factors. I left that appointment a little bit disappointed. Maybe about an hour and a half later, she sent me a text message. Unbelievable. Water broke when I was driving. Today's the day. It was very controlled. None of it happened by accident. And we had some black girl magic in the delivery room. They had my best interest at heart, and they were going to do the work that they had been educated in doing. Oh my gosh. You look beautiful in your arms. The twins didn't have to go to the NICU. They were healthy. Mom was healthy. I'm so thankful to you. Oh. I don't. Oh my <laughs> this was a high-risk pregnancy, period. Everything had turned out the way we had all hoped because she got exactly what she needed. All we need are providers who will listen, put their bias aside, and give black women the care they deserve. My situation is gonna to look totally different from another black woman's situation, and that's gonna to look totally different from a white woman's situation, and so on and so forth. The Black Women's Health Imperative has partnered with the Association of Women's Health Obstetric and Neonatal Nurses, we call it A1, for the very first time to bring anti-racism and anti-bias training to obstetric providers. We need our providers to protect Black women's health. We've convened a number of focus groups we brought black women from all over the country together to talk about their birth experience. <laughs> and we're using all of this research to make sure that black women have the best birth outcomes possible. <laughs>